on to the next category, ladies and gentlemen, the specialized hospitals category. And I'd like to invite on stage Asian Heart Institute for Cardiac Hospitals. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am Ashwarya Singh, and I extend a very warm welcome to all of you to this occasion of great significance. I'd like to now invite Mr. Deepak Lamba, President Times Conferences Limited and CEO Worldwide Media. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Deepak Lamba, please help me welcome him. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening, and I welcome you all to the Economic Times Best Healthcare Brand Summit 2016. This is an evening to recognize different healthcare brands that have maintained their leadership over the years, despite a fairly competitive and challenging market. It's also an effort to recognize new players who've made a distinct place for themselves with their, with their innovative ideas to meet the healthcare needs. Whether these brands are new or have ruled the market for years, each one has made a considerable contribution, along with government initiatives, towards taking forward the healthcare system of our country. The Best Healthcare Brands is built on the success of the Best Brands series, which we initiated in 2014. In these two years, we have studied and researched various genres and the brands that stand out in each of these different segments. Like in all of our other studies, the Best Brands in Healthcare too were decided on the parameters of innovation, brand value, brand recall, customer satisfaction, service, and quality. And interestingly, we discovered that the DNA of the most successful brands across all these different genres have the same goals, that of delivering quality to the end consumer. They value the loyalty of their customers and yet are constantly innovating and reinventing their products to keep the users happy and maintain their leadership position. Thank you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, for the keynote address, please help me welcome at this point Director General of Health Services, Dr. Jagdish Prasad. Ladies and gentlemen, all the delegates, as you know, when the constitution was made, it was unfortunately or fortunately, it was decided that the health, nutrition, and the standard of living will be the subject of the state, not the federal central governments. And because of this, there is lots of disparity in the health system of the country. With coming up to these governments, our Honorable Prime Minister has spoken universal health coverage. And with this concept only, as you know, that many states, we identified the 18 states of the country which have a poor infrastructures. Because I'll, as you, uh, all of you know very well, that 68% of rural population is seen by only 2% of the doctors. And rest 38% is seen by 98% of the doctors. This is the real scenario of our country. Now, under the Prime Minister Universal Health Coverage, the Prime Minister has decided three things. Essential drug should be given free. Diagnosis should be provided free. And third most important part is that insurance under the national health policy, the Prime Minister has, we are going to at least put insurance nearly 80 million people. I have a technical committee meeting, and we have relaxed the medical devices rule for the manufacturers to make it without license. You have a very vital role to play as far as the infrastructure in the health is concerned. That's the only thing I have to say, and my request to all of you, please come forward to help the government. Thank you very much. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to now invite Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, Secretary Health and Research at the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Please help me welcome the lady with a very big hand. First of all, I must uh, congratulate uh, the ET for taking up this initiative. I think it's a very timely one that we are recognizing health brands. Uh, inequities uh, and poverty is what is driving a lot of the poor health outcomes you know, that we see today. And, of course, there are many social determinants of health. And unless we recognize those and address them, we will not be a healthy nation. We have growingly opportunities of using our IT infrastructure and abilities, the mobile coverage to do telemedicine. Our other big advantage is, uh, is human resources. 
uh, our country is uh, a young country. We have lots of young people trained in different disciplines, motivated on the spirit of entrepreneurship. All of you here are examples to that. We're able to do things in low cost, not necessarily only jugad, but also, you know, actually be able to think out of the box and do things innovatively. There are some threats, though. I mentioned inequities in healthcare. The other one is increasing NCDs, absolutely galloping rates of hypertension and diabetes in our country. And the biggest risk factor uh, today is uh, pollution, both environmental air pollution as well as indoor air pollution. For a lot of women who still cook with solid fuel in rural areas, we don't often think about indoor air pollution, but it's a very big threat to health. Tobacco is a very big risk to health. And again, I think all of us can do our bit to control the use of tobacco. And then the innovation ecosystem and the regulatory system in the country could also potentially be improved to really make it easier for things to move from the lab or from an idea or from a prototype through the different stages of testing to a product in the market rapidly, but done in a well-regulated way. And finally, where uh, can you know, the private sector really contribute? Uh, again, you, you know, private sector provides 70% of health care in this country. is the first point of care in any case for majority of people who are seeking health care. So there's a huge responsibility on the private sector to do things fairly, to do things responsibly, to do things as equitably as possible. So I look forward to interacting with, uh, with many of you today as well as in the future. And once again, thanks very much for this opportunity. It is now my privilege to request our Honorable Chief Guest, Sri Jagat Pratap Nadda, Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare Government of India. Please bring him to the podium with a huge round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about health system, we all know that uh, we are facing dual challenges. The challenges of communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases. We are facing the challenge of the gap between the urban health care and the rural health care. We are also facing the challenge of the gap between the private health care and the public health care. And so when we talk about health care, we have to see in a holistic manner how we can bridge these gaps. We are trying to see to it that to fill the gaps so that the logistics can be provided better. When we talk about universal health coverage, it is not only a slogan. We are trying to convert it into a reality. This year, our Prime Minister has declared that we will go for National Health Protection Insurance Scheme. Out of 1.25 billion people, 40 crore people will be covered in the scheme. An insurance of 1 lakh rupee yearly for a family without any capping, on a floater basis, will be given to every family who are economically weaker and which comes to about 40 crore people. And not only that, all senior citizens above the age of 60 will be getting an extra coverage of 30,000 rupees on a yearly basis. I'm happy to also say to you that we have been able to arrest HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria, and now we are making it go towards decline. Uh, what I would like to say that there are many initiatives which the government has taken to see to it that uh, we are able to give better health facilities to the common man and bridge the gap between the rural and the urban, between the private and the public, and also region-wise also. We have concentrated on Central India by starting an All India Institute of Medical Sciences at Raipur, at Bhopal. We, are, uh, we have also seen to it that there should be an All India Institute of Medical Sciences in Orissa. We are starting in in, Cal in, Cal in Calcutta, West Bengal. We have given one All Indian of Medical Sciences in Assam. We have given two All India Medical Sciences in Jammu and Kashmir, one in Himachal Pradesh, one in Punjab. So we have taken practically care of Central India, the, the Eastern India, and the Northern India as far as the tertiary healthcare is concerned. So these, there are many initiatives which we are trying to take, but uh, one individual is not the repository of all wisdom. We need your suggestions also. We need your inputs also. 
so that we can give a better health facility. I must congratulate Economic Times for giving this an opportunity to me. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be unveiling the cover of the coffee table book. India's number one heart hospital with one of the world's best cardiac teams. Asian Heart Institute. Umid Me Elaj. Elaj Me Khushi.